this this one hour is primarily aimed at how would you set up an assignment how you would how would you even get started okay so uh, to begin with um, just I think we just need to think about uh, putting a bit of context into why we would look at Wikipedia within teaching and learning and Tim so Tim Berners-Lee said a couple of years ago just to give you a bit of context that when he was looking at the whole Facebook and Cambridge Analytica scandal he, he was quoted as saying we need to rethink our attitude to the internet it's not enough just to keep the web open and free because we must also keep a track of what people are building on it and looking at the systems that the people are using like the social networks and look at whether they are actually helping humanity are they being constructive or are they being destructive so he felt like the open web and the internet were at something of a crossroads and could go in a positive or negative or constructive or destructive direction uh, thankfully a couple of months later when he was giving his turing award lecture in may a end of may 2018 he was quoted as saying it's amazing that humanity has managed to produce wikipedia and somebody recently said you know what for all the defending of the open net and the open web would have been worth it if we had just got wikipedia so although he had some concerns about the nature of the open web and working in the open web and how information was being consumed and disseminated the fundamentals of volunteer editors sharing fact-checked neutrally written knowledge and making an accessible worldwide audience he saw that as a net boon a net positive a students staff people all around the world being constructive and that's where we sort of come into uh, the equation for uh, at the university of edinburgh um, we have been doing this work for about five years now um, but because we're a research-based institution um, our, the very first editing event that we held in February 2015 um, which was based on the Edinburgh Seven the first group of matriculated undergraduate female students at any British University um, we had an editing event focused on the pages of the Edinburgh Seven and we invited Professor Alison Littlejohn from the Open University to come along and research the event and to let us see if there was some genuine formal and informal learning going on at these events and whether there, there was value in the university exploring this a bit uh, more and working with Wikimedia UK which is the UK chapter of the Wikimedia Foundation and what she's done is she's produced um, more than two papers. It's something around five or six papers arising from this event. And she did find that there was genuine formal and informal learning going on at these events. And the first paper looked at the formations of networks of practice and social capital through participating in an editing event. And we learned that activity didn't stop after the event and that participants also saw it as a an important part of their professional development and the second paper looked at the whole process of learning how to become a Wikipedia editor and becoming knowledge activists but and it looked at the important discussions that were generated by the event around how information was created curated and edited online and how editors felt they could positively impact on the knowledge available to people all around the world and to addressing knowledge gaps. So those papers are available. I can make them available to you after today if you're interested, but that legitimated us working with Wikimedia and exploring how we could better uh, involve teaching and learning in looking at Wikipedia and its sister projects and the result of this is that we've now produced a booklet of case studies 
which you can discover at bit.ly forward slash wiki case studies of 14 exemplars of how Wikipedia and its sister projects are being used in UK education. And these cover five examples from the University of Edinburgh and another um, nine examples from other institutions and from secondary school curriculum in Anglesey in Wales, where the students there write in Welsh and they talk about the culture of Anglesey in Wales and write articles about those, uh, the people, the places and the culture of Anglesey and add them to Welsh Wikipedia. But I'll give you a few examples of some of the case studies and then we'll have a bit more of a practical how to thereafter. Um, like I say, if you have any questions or audio problems, uh, just let me know in the chat. OK, so um, we do also have um, just added a couple of rubrics so that if you're wanting help assessing an article, uh, there are those links in the slides bit.ly wiki rubric one. I'll put that in the, the in, uh, chat and bit.ly wiki rubric two. But you don't need to sort of reinvent the wheel. You can work with existing sort of uh, assessment and uh, course program structures. But I'll, I'll, I'll give you a some examples as we go forward. But those are a couple of rubrics you can have a look at uh, that can be modified and tailored to your own course discipline. Um, couple of examples from the case studies booklet. We are working with reproductive medicine honours undergraduate students and we've been working with them each year for the last five years where the students come together um, at the end of September each year in two three-hour workshops and they work in groups sat around uh, egg-shaped desks like these um, although it's going to be an online session this year. Um, and what they do is they group research a reproductive medical term not uh, yet on Wikipedia. And they learn about databases of knowledge uh, and different ways of searching that from our academic support librarian colleagues. And they research it in one three hour workshop and then they learn how to edit in a in the next week in another three hour workshop. The first hour teaches them how to edit a page and then they spend the next two hours then group as a group putting that page together and publishing it and then doing an oral brief oral presentation of their group's efforts at the end of that workshop. And they produce some fabulous articles like on articles like high grade serous carcinoma which is one of the most serious forms of um, ovarian cancer. And it didn't have a page on Wikipedia until uh, a student on that course wrote it. And that page has now been viewed over 100,000 times. And I'll add that to the chat. And she even created her open licensed diagrams so that to better illustrate the uh, topic as well. So there's about 60 references on that page as well. So although Wikipedia has a reputation for being unreliable, um, it's strictly speaking more um, accurate to call it a variable source. Um, because some pages are excellent, because I know because our students of SAP have contributed to those pages, but obviously some pages are a work in progress and you should never cite a Wikipedia page. Wikipedia does not want you to cite it. Uh, thanks, Benjamin. Uh, um, Wikipedia does not want you to cite it, but you should, if the, the sources of information Wikipedia uses are reliable, published secondary sources, then you can cite those. So don't cite Wikipedia, help write it. And we need to really think about moving away from passively consuming Wikipedia, but think about what we in education, universities and schools and people all around the world, what we can actually contribute 
and and in doing so in having a more active engaged role what we can learn about information literacy digital skills open access neutral point of view writing for a lay audience all of these important graduate competencies that we want people to come away with and have a be a bit more aware of how information gets online and ways in which they can be empowered to improve that information uh, a couple of other examples uh, translation studies students at the university of edinburgh um, they need meaningful published practice ahead of the world of work so what we do is we get them to have a look at the best quality articles on wikipedia and see if they can pick one that they are interested in and see if they can translate it into a different language wikipedia because wikipedia has many different languages something like 300 different languages and i can post a link into the chat window that shows you that english wikipedia is by far the largest english wikipedia has greater than six million articles after that it the list of wikipedias drops dramatically and you have swedish wikipedia with about three to four million articles and uh, german wikipedia has quite got quite a lot spanish wikipedia but chinese wikipedia is something around a million articles and arabic wikipedia is 600,000 or more so these are massive global uh, language audiences that are not being well served by wikipedia currently and we can help that by translating content and that can help students get meaningful published practice that they feel quite proud of that they've produced something that is published and lasts beyond the end of the assignment and there is now this content translation tool that does allow you to help migrate content paragraph by paragraph taking all the links and citations and references across and images as well and helps you machine translate bit by bit but it still needs that native uh, language speaker to help edit the machine translation otherwise uh, it is just uh, garbled uh, nonsense but quite a lot of the time but that's what we've been doing for the last every semester for the last four or five years now and we're also bringing in more collaborations like in islamic art there's a, a, a big move within the university to help decolonize the curriculum and help decolonize wikipedia so students at the edinburgh college of art are going to be having a look at art based articles and islamic art based articles on wikipedia and working groups to evaluate what the content looks like and then spend uh, about uh, a month just to add 500 words to these articles in their groups um, so those are three examples uh, that we're beginning and what we find is that students and staff have a positive experience if the are uh, if the assignment is set up correctly they do feel quite motivated that they are doing something that is both good for their professional development and good for the common good as well um, I do I have added a video of staff and student um, reactions to working with Wikipedia into the slides and I'm going to provide you with the, the link to the slides so that you can have a look at that after today and there's another video there um, of a learning technologist at the University of Maryland Jim Groom talking about wiki project murder madness and mayhem which was a project at the University of British Columbia to take articles that were short very short stub articles on Latin American literature and take them to feed article quality on Wikipedia. Now, if you're looking to hone in on areas of Wikipedia to, to, that you would like to check for where you would even begin with an assignment, I'm gonna suggest that you have a look at featured articles. Now I'm gonna share my screen for a moment just to show you how you can start honing in on areas of Wikipedia to work with, okay? 
So I'm just going to sh stop sharing that for a moment. And I'll stop sharing my video as well because this might overload the bandwidth. Okay. See my screen? This is the front page of English Wikipedia, which has six million articles and list of Wikipedias. Is here. And this is what I mean when I was saying about the list of all the Wikipedia. There are about 313 languages with about 303 currently active. And I'm going to have to make this slightly smaller, my screen, so you can see it. But the, they should have a table down the bottom with the number of articles unless i'm in the wrong place oh there we are no we are okay so you can see how articles are divided up there's english with six million articles Cebuano with five swedish with three million german with two million french with two million and it keeps dropping all the way down and on Wikipedia, you'll see on the left hand side that um, there's a languages bar. So you can click through to find out about different language, uh, about the same article, but it might be completely different content in a different language Wikipedia. But that languages bar will try and um, have that marry up those pages that are similar in different languages. Okay. One other thing to note is that if you click on the globe symbol in the top left, that will always take you to Wikipedia's front page. And the page is viewed something like in the region of 16 to 25 million times a day. And you can nominate information to be up, included on this page in the, in the news section. Uh, as a did you know fact and an on this day fact so and you can help nominate pages to be included on that page that's a great way of um knowledge activism if you take a page that doesn't yet exist and then highlight it on the front page of wikipedia where 60 million people could view it but it also always has a featured article so today's featured article is michelle williams and the featured article is are the best quality articles on Wikipedia. And they always have that little star in the right hand corner. And there's about somewhere in the region of 6,000 of the best, best quality articles on Wikipedia. So if you're looking for good exemplars for your students to emulate best practice, Featured articles are the ones to have a look at because these, well, there's 5,844 there. So what I did there was I just clicked on the star. If I click on the star, it takes me to a list of all the featured articles on English Wikipedia. And it organizes them by topic. So if you're interested in a particular topic, like architecture and archaeology, you look at any of these, like Braum Castle, and it would show you how information should be laid out if you're looking to create a, a wonderful community reviewed article in terms of all the elements that go into making it. So if you're looking for an exemplar, use the featured articles. But if you're looking for pages that are really short, that could definitely be improved, what I would say is have a look at the talk page. If you have a look at the talk page behind an article that you're interested in, like Braum Castle, you see there it says article and then behind that talk page. Uh, I'll just check in case. Just do let me know if ever my screen stops sharing for any reason. But on the talk page, you'll see that this article has been nominated for good article status. 
and good articles are the second highest quality on Wikipedia. So they go, they are first nominated to be a good article and community reviewed. And if they are not, if they succeed in being a good article, then they can then be nominated for feature article status, which is then community reviewed as well. But the interesting thing here is the articles are looked after by wiki projects. And wiki projects are areas of Wikipedia where groups of editors come together to improve and curate content on that topic. So here we have wiki project military history, architecture, England, archaeology, Middle Ages, Cumbria. And from an educational point of view, what's really useful about these wiki projects is that you have a community of editors that can help support you in your particular area of special specialism. But it's also an area where they have already curated the content. So if I took archaeology, for example, if I go through to their page, uh, they should have an assessment section. So you click on assessment. And within every wiki project has this little box where it shows you the list of archaeology articles by quality and importance. So you see that they have 62 featured articles. So 62 of their of archaeology based articles are considered the best quality and could be featured on Wikipedia's front page. Then we have 152 good articles that are the second highest level of quality but then we've got um, b class which is the next level down c class next level down again start class not very good articles could definitely be improved and then stub class are the really short fewer than a, fewer than 300 words and you can click on that it shows you articles that could definitely be improved upon. So if you're looking for an area to focus on, the stub, those, these sort of stub lists are very useful. Okay. Now, um, also, while I'm here, I'll mention also that um, there is also on Wikipedia what they call a category tree. If I go back to Broadcastle, for example, at the bottom of the Broadcastle page, there is uh, categories so that you can group similar articles together. And there are also these uh, navigation boxes, which are great for curating content on Wikipedia. And you can help create those navigation boxes as well. But the category system is quite useful if you're looking to see how Wikipedia curates particular areas. So what's one thing you can do is look at the category tree system. Uh, Wikipedia category tree. And for example, if you were interested in archaeology, Um, you could click show tree and it'll show you the hierarchy of um, categories and the subcategories and you can go into an area that you're interested in and it'll show you that archaeology by century has two subcategories archaeology by decade has one subcategory and 20 pages uh, yeah, then you've got archaeologists, 10 category, 10 subcategories, etc. So it's, a, it, it's another way of like having a look at the content and honing in on an area of Wikipedia to target for your editing um, experience with the students. OK, I'm going to come back to my presentation now, but category tree. I'll just put the link in there. So that you can see how you access that. Okay, and I'll stop sharing. So, okay, so if I go back here, okay. Now, uh, yeah, just to point out as well that 
you don't have to be a Wikipedia expert to run these assignments. I certainly wasn't. Um, um, basically, Wikipedia editing can be learned to roughly about an hour, an hour and a half, just to get the, the main grips of how to teach. Um, my, my own background is that I was an in, a secondary school, a high school English teacher um, who sort of like also did information management and had done software development years ago. But the main thing I was recruited for at the university was because I was a teacher. And the feeling is that Wikipedia can be, the technical skills can be learnt very quickly, but it's those soft communication skills about how to facilitate editing that um, need, we need more people that can do that. So we need more learning technologists, more teachers, um, more trainers that can help support working with Wikipedia and translate how Wikipedia works. Um, but if you're needing any help after today, just email me at that email address or you can follow me on Twitter. Um, the slides for today, which cover pretty much everything I'm talking about, are at this link. So if everyone could click on this link, come into the slides. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to set up an assignment page. Because uh, once you've got an assignment page and it's it's a bit more focused about how it's going to be set up, that helps crystallize everything a bit more. And then we can go on to talk a bit more about how you would create a work list for your students to um, target. And then if you will probably run out of a bit of time, but if you're interested in how you would then teach how to edit, then we do have that workshop in the same place, at, but at two o'clock. Okay, so um, are there any questions at this point? Okay, great. So I'll crack on. Um, so like I say, um, what we're doing at the University of Edinburgh is really rethinking our relationship with Wikipedia and education. And we, the Association for Learning Technology defines um, learning technology as a broad range of communication, information and related technologies that can be used to support learning, teaching and assessment. I'm arguing that Wikipedia is a learning technology, but we don't think of it like that. It's something that our students can engage with and be empowered to assess critically, but also help improve. Um, well, you would have to look at um, you would have to look at the category tree system, and I think you would also have a look at Wiki projects assessment criteria to see where what are the best quality articles and what are the worst and just have a look at your own areas of uh, teaching and see where you feel gaps are but I, i'm going to show you a, in a, a bit later how to create a work list um, and that might help crystallize that a bit more for you but if you're interested in a survey report that um, was done on Wikipedia educators, then there is that one at bits.ly wiki edu uh, from January 2018. So I'll put that in the chat. Okay. Um, in terms of the focus of your editing, an editathon or an editing event or an editing assignment can be anything you want it to be. Um, and more practical guidance about how to run a Wikipedia editing event, you can you can um, discover that if you go to Wikipedia Editathon. So if you type Wikipedia colon Editathon in the search bar of Wikipedia, then there'll be a whole page devoted to how to run an Editathon. But I'm going to just summarize some of the, the main things to, that you can watch out for or do with an editathon. You can improve existing articles. You can create as many short articles as possible, what we call stubs. 
um, articles that are less than 300 words. Um, for, it to, for it to create a new article on Wikipedia, you only need around 50 to 100 words backed up by three to four reliable published secondary sources. So you can improve existing articles, you can create as many sub articles as possible, you can look at one particular page. We're going to look at the page of Henry Dundas um, and his links to slavery later this semester. Um, you could add images as well. It's sometimes very hard to find open licensed copyright free images to go on Wikipedia, but we know that articles that are illustrated on Wikipedia tend to be at least 20 to 30 percent more likely to be read. So adding images to Wikipedia is a um, massive thing that people can do. And you can also translate articles as well. Um, there is also a competition going on at the moment called Wiki Loves Monuments, I should mention, which is uh, runs for the whole of September. Wiki Loves Monuments, and what it is, is a comp it's a photography competition where people are all around the world are encouraged to take a picture of a listed building or a scheduled monument. So monuments and our cultural heritage essentially and go take pictures of their interiors their exteriors and help share them online to wikimedia commons so that we have better documented and preserved and looked after our cultural heritage so this runs for the whole of september and that's a really nice way of taking images from people's phones that they've taken just walking around socially distanced and uploading them to Wikimedia Commons and then inserting into relevant pages. And that's running and you can maybe win a prize if your pitch is particularly good. Um, more guidance on how to run editing events or teaching assignments can be found on Wikipedia's platform for helping to run these assignments, which is called the dashboard. It's called the Programs and Events Dashboard, and it has within it training modules, both for educators and both for students. Some self-directed um, tutorials that you can click through. And I'll put this short link into that. tinyurl.com learn editathons. And what we're going to do is, and we're going to have a go at playing around with that platform just just now, just to show you how an art an, an assignment page can be set up. So, what I want you to do is go to that link, outreach dashboard .wmflabs .org. and I'll post the link into the chat. If everyone could go to this link. And it will ask you to log in with your Wikipedia account. So you could all make sure you are logged into Wikipedia with an account and then join the dashboard page. You do that now and I'll just run through the main benefits of the dashboard. What it is is a platform run by Wikimedia which creates an enrollment link for students to automatically click on and have their accounts linked to the dashboard page so that all their edits are monitored and uh, quantified in terms of how many words are added, how many references, uh, and how many images are shared. And it can create timelines for structuring assignments like week one, week two, week three, and tasks for each of those weeks. And it does include, you can embed short self-directed training tutorials as part of that structuring of the assignment. And it automatically updates statistics, pulling information from the associated student Wikipedia accounts. And finally, it also has an authorship highlighting tool 
whereby you can highlight on a Wikipedia page in purple one student's edits and in a completely different color, cyan, and another student's effort. So you can see very clearly what student does did, where, did which part of the page. Um, Wikipedia also has um, a copyright, um, well, a, a plagiarism checker called Copyvio that you can make use of. Copyvio tool that um, works with Turnitin to see where, because everything on Wikipedia has to be written in your own words and attributed as to where it came from. But that tool is quite useful for checking plagiarism. And there is a word count tool that you can enable as well if you have a particular uh, word count that you're looking for the students to make use of. That would have to be enabled. So there's a little short how to guide for so enabling a word count. OK, so what I'm going to do is get you to have a go at creating an assignment page. And if you could just follow these steps within the slides just now. Hopefully it's going to be reasonably straightforward, but let me know if you're having any problems and then I'll demo it myself so that you can join my assignment page and pretend to be a student. But if you could all have a go just now and just see how easy it is or not to create an assignment page. Okay, and if you can give me a thumbs up once you've done step six, and then I, I'm going to move on to the next slide, um, which has a bit more details. Okay, I'm, I'll just move on. If anyone needs me to go back, let me know. But Please specify a unique title for your program, as this will create a unique URL for your course. So you would set it to your own institution and you can track various different language Wikipedias. I've set it to EN for English. French Wikipedia would be FR. And German would be DE. And just you can just do is like placeholder text, course assignment where students because then it, all of this can be edited later. But once you've got down to step eight, that's your assignment basically created. And I'll 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 demo in a moment. I'll just show show you a bit more um, of a of the layout of the dashboard once you've got, everyone's got to step eight. Um, so uh, if you can also give me a thumbs up if you get to step eight. Anyone else need more time? And um, what I'll do is I'll, do, I'll just demo these steps um, and just so you can see it if, if uh, everyone's, anyone's having problems or they're not ready. Actually, I'll just, I'll just demo it, okay? So I'm just gonna stop sharing my slides for a moment so I can share my screen. Okay. So hopefully you can see, it'll just ask you to log in with Wikipedia and log in with your unified login. Here we go. Yeah, it'll ask you, it'll ask the students and yourself to marry your Wikipedia account to the dashboard. And you just click allow and it, it, tell your students to allow it. And then what you then do is when you're in your dashboard, there is this tab here for training at the top of the page. Training, 
and there are a whole load of training libraries that are really useful for running editathons, but also training modules that you can provide to your students about getting to grips with Wikipedia's essentials, a little practical in the editing basics tutorial, and how to work with a sandbox, which is where people draft content. And editing medical topics is a, is a really useful one because there is a higher level of uh, referencing requirement for medical topics that you need to be aware of, whereby the students should only use review literature from the last five years if they're going to cite anything on those pages. But if I go back to my dashboard, what you do is you just cr click on create an independent program. And if you run other courses in the past, you can clone from previous assignments. But it's easy enough to create a brand new program and a basic program at that. And you can just put in a title, test, uh, and I could do reproductive biology assignment. For example, institution, University of Edinburgh. You could track English Wikipedia, but you can also add other different Wikipedias and Wikipedia sites. And this is just a, a placeholder description assignment in October to improve uh, Wikipedia pages on reproductive biology. And then you can make it private if you so choose, but I think we want to provide the assignment link to the students. And you can set how long you want to monitor their edits. I'm just saying that we should, we're just gonna monitor for today only from 12 till five. And what I'm going to do is put this link, I'm going to put the enrollment link into the chat window so that you can see what it, the page looks like from a student's point of view. I'm just clicking create my program. And then it, it automatically creates this enrollment link with a special password at the end of it. And the password is also available here in the passcode section. And this is just students to so that it makes it available for them. So I'm gonna put this in the chat so that you can all join my assignment page. So if you'll click on that link in the chat. And let's see. There we go. Okay, so hopefully once you've clicked on that link and hit allow, it should start, there we go. It'll start showing you that you've appeared as a link in my editors menu. So I can click on your user page there. The sandbox is where students will draft content. And there's links to all um, Akbar Ali's uh, other uh, sandboxes and a link to their contributions, their edits. Every page that they've edited uh, it has you can assign articles to that student as well uh, by clicking assign article and this can be an existing article title like Mary Simon Boyd or you can search Wikipedia for an article or it can be a brand new article that they are assigning and it'll just pop up there and you can assign a peer review as well you can also have articles here as a list that students can choose from themselves. So available articles, we could put in Donald Trump, for example, add article, and there it's pulling in the, the classification, the assessment, and then this page, but you can also do that for articles that don't yet exist as well. And there's an option there to find articles. It'll keep track of uploads, like images that are uploaded to Wikimedia Commons. Uh, one thing that's good is 
where this will automatically update with the number of articles edited, total number of edits, number of editors, number of words added. And there's two editors now. There's prior fluvial. And, the, and within the article section, there should be an option there to, once they've started editing, the assessment tool section will have the authorship highlighting option there. But one thing to maybe note is if you want to set up the assignment to have a timeline of week one, week two, week three, what you can do is um, edit, click edit details on the home screen. And you need to set a timeline enable to yes. Within this, you can also add other usernames to help you facilitate the course. So I could add uh, any one of you as um, moderators and facilitators on the course as well. Click Save. And now I've got a new drop down of timeline. And if I click on that, I can start creating blocks. So add a week one. So for week one, what we're going to do is have um, call it reading week and set some reading tasks. We're going to do it in class and we can add some self-directed modules for the students to do within this week. Click save and students will be able to see that and hopefully click start and it'll just it's just a little 10 minute exercise really that they can click through to about policies and guidelines but that's essentially how you as a course leader would help set up and monitor assignments um i've only got about five minutes left so i thought i'd just show you some example work lists and then i'm happy to take any questions so if I go back to my slides, actually, it's probably better if I share my slides so that you can also click in the links. Uh -huh. So I'm going to click back into my slides and stop sharing my screen. So, uh, where are we, where are we? Okay, so there is a video within the slides about how to work with the dashboard if, you're, if that was all a bit too quick for you. So there is a video you can, that will allow you to sort of like have a bit more of a play around with the dashboard. But main thing is to create a work list of areas to target on because you've got six million articles you can work with you really need to hone in on personalizing it and um, having a suggested articles to be created list and an articles to be improved list that often helps and what we do is we try and crowdsource that a little bit because if you have more people looking at that a particular area of wikipedia you get more suggestions and it becomes less onerous a task so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that women in STEM and work list links within the slides. Just to show you an example way of laying out work list. Uh, where are we? So I'll put this in the chat as well. So here's a page I have created on Wikipedia, which you're welcome to copy. And the one, let me just share my screen again. So here we go, Women in STEM Connect. So this is a project page on Wikipedia. If it's got the Wikipedia colon prefix, then it's away from the main article space. 
So I've set it up as University of Edinburgh Events and Workshops Women in STEM. And I've set it up as a when and where, linked an online webinar, create your account, join the dashboard, suggested layout of activities for like an afternoon's editing, but you could also spread it over an entire semester if you wanted. And a list of articles to create. Where you have red links to pages that don't yet exist and links to sources of information the students could use to help them create these pages and an articles to edit section. But if you're not happy creating a page on Wikipedia, what you can just do is create a spreadsheet like this. And again, this has been something that's been crowdsourced. Who's working on the page? Want to divide that task up? It can be individual editing or group editing or paired editing. The name of the article, are we going to create or expand it? Can we add ta what sort of tasks could we do to this page? There's a little blurb about an about section that might be useful to the students just to, if they are choosing which article to work on and then if we are creating new content we do need to make sure that there at least is the possibility that there are sources of information out there either online or in print that are reliable published secondary sources that we can use now you don't have to find four references for all but if you're looking to create a brand new page, if you're looking to create a brand new page, you do need about three or four different sources of information that are considered reliable um, to justify that Wikipedia should have a page on it. So 50, 50 to 100 words on a new topic and at least three to four re reliable published secondary sources. And that's normally enough to legitimate a brand new article on that topic. But if you're just editing existing articles, you might just want, you know, a couple, one or two. And like crowdsourcing that helps. Because otherwise it could be, it depends on your class size. I mean, it doesn't hurt for the students to do their own searching and researching of the topic. But uh, I would just caution against students maybe hitting a dead end during an editing workshop because that can be very frustrating if you spend all afternoon looking for information and you just find there isn't enough out there. Um, so those are my main guidance tips. The slides are there with other suggested work lists. We've got one on women in sport there as well that's just on a Google Doc. So you can just create a work list there. Who's working on it? what sources of information are out there as well. So there's various ways of creating the work list. The main thing is to have the work list in the first place. And if you're wanting to learn how to edit, we, we do have this workshop at two o'clock. But the main thing is have a go yourself, play around with the dashboard, and you can contact Wikimedia UK who are very happy to help support any new assignments or we'll put you in touch with Wikipedia trainers in your area. You can attend a Wikipedia editathon yourself and we have a list of events where they are taking place. We've got video tutorials on Media Hopper and YouTube. We've got WordPress resources, training libraries, PDFs, handouts and a lesson plan. I'm very happy to help as well. Um, and like I said, but we have curated 300 videos and video tutorials breaking every da part down in the Wikipedia editing uh, experience. But have a, have a click through the slides. There's also games you can play, little tasks like Citation Hunt and Wiki Loves Monuments in there and Wiki Races. So little small tasks that students can do quite simply, even if you don't want to do it over an entire afternoon. You can just do like five minute tasks add a link, add a citation, add an image, race from one page to another. Like Donald Trump to World War III, for example. 
Okay, so short tasks, short fun tasks are good. But have a think of the learning outcomes you want to achieve and work back for that. And reach out for support. Okay, and I would also suggest front loading the assignment so that students are incul inculcated in the best practice before they begin so that their edits are more likely to stick. Because what you don't want is them to edit and then have their edits removed because they're not following Wikipedia's policies and guidelines. Okay, and there's some guidance there about reliable sources, what goes into making a page, and making sure that you handle their edits with care at the end of the assignment. Okay, so if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them, but the slides are there. I would get in touch with Wikimedia UK or a chapter more local to you. And they're always help, happy to support editing efforts and can supply you with swag materials, stickers, t-shirts, et cetera, as well. Um, so yeah, any questions, let me know. But thanks for coming. <laughs>